Hello, I'm Jagger J, and one of my biggest passions is writing. I love writing stories and novels and anything I can think of if I have the chance. I am always open for ideas, even though I am overflowing with ideas. So many that it is really hard to concentrate sometimes, but you aren't here for me to talk about my ideas. You are instead here because you want to learn about my tips for anthropomorphic animals and how to write them. And as such, I will do my best. For those of you here who don't know what anthropomorphic means, which I am sure is only a few of you, then I highly suggest you check out one of my older videos, especially one called Anthropomorphism in the Furry Fandom, as it explains in great detail what anthropomorphism is, as well as a few other techniques. But I bet you are looking for more techniques that were supplied in that video. So with all that being said, let's begin. So, anthropomorphic animals, or human-like animals, can be used to make a reader or watcher of a movie feel something like anger, empathy, or sadness, as those people watching will usually feel what the animal is feeling if you decide that is what you want. For instance, writing an animal that is smiling, aka the smiling fox, will make people imagine a happy fox and thus will feel happy for the fox. If you write a sad fox, then it can make people feel sad, and so on. Making people feel something for a character can be very hard, however, but anthropomorphism is an easy and simple way to cheat as we will always feel for an animal, except people who hate animals, obviously. Another useful tip is to try to make your animal feel incredibly human, without making it so human that that is all that you see. You need to make a perfect balance of animal as well as human. Now this is another tricky thing of course, but if pulled off, it gives you the emotions that come with an animal as well as the human-like feelings that come with anthropomorphic animals. For instance, Always allude to a tail, or fuzzy ears, or paws, or long nose, to show that people reading that this is, indeed, an animal, while also allowing it to smile, or even talk or walk on two legs, to let them know that this is half human. Movies have it easier on this part, as they can also have the added bonus of visuals. Now one question you may be asking yourself is this, should I make my animal cute or smart? Now, as you go up the anthropomorphic line, passing 50% will make your animal become more serious and much smarter. My tips for choosing between the two is simple. For one, smart animals, at least in my opinion, should be used in serious events such as post-apocalyptic worlds or the end of the world, especially if they are the main character. I mean, you don't want to be with a hero who is a complete dumbo throughout the adventure, do you? I would also recommend saving the cute furries for events like whether the hero finds an animal in the wild, or if you need some comic relief, or even a funny story moment, as it gives a feeling of a more light-hearted and carefree character. My last tip of the day is to not make them all-knowing, overpowered animals. Now what do I mean by this? Now I know creatures like dragons and evil villains are known for having all-knowing personalities, but to write a good all-knowing character is incredibly difficult. For instance, you have to make them feel like they know what is going to happen, without writing them in such a way that gives away the answer, as well as writing them in a way to be one step ahead of the main character, with their actions being questionable at best. It is very hard to write said characters without them giving away too much until the very end, as making them feel like they are hiding something almost forces the reader to read on. But what about overpowered? This is, oddly enough, another tough thing to write about. Now, overpowered characters in movies like Wolverine are indestructible and seem to be a powerhouse, plowing through all the enemies in front of them. However, making these characters godlike, such as giving them no weaknesses, will mean that the audience will have no feeling for this character in the same way that they do for normal characters. Now, I'm not saying to kill them off, no, but they need a weakness. Something that can show that they are not just immortal, but mortal. They also need to have feelings stronger than anyone else's, so that if they never grow old and stuff, they can feel that they have a loss and something. They've lost something, like people or friends, so you can feel a lot more closer to them. Although they are invincible, they are broken inside. Anyway, I will stop there. I like giving out tips and tricks, especially writing ones. So I ask, was this helpful in any way? 
was I able to get you to think about things, and what's your story about that you are planning? Tell me in the comments below, and have a great day.